And so with those um, uh, basics out of the way, let's go ahead and um, just uh, introduce what, our, what the plan is today. Um, it's about an hour of uh, kind of uh, one-way information where we're gonna tell you about ELSI, about the Earth Life Science Institute, what, who we are, um, what, we're, what we're doing, what our goals are. We're gonna give you an overview of the LC course that we started from last year. It's an international combined master's PhD course that we're offering here. And after that, we will um, have a sort of a, a round table discussion by the LC faculty, the, the PIs and, and the uh, APIs of the Institute, where we will all tell you about our research activities um, as a sort of a priming um, for, for further conversations and uh, research opportunities. After that, uh, number four, we'll describe the application process and the entrance examination. This is really important because the university systems in different countries are quite different from one another. And accordingly, the university system in Japan is maybe different from uh, what you're used to. So we'll have a kind of a nuts and bolts discussion about the application process and the entrance examination. After that, we'll have uh, uh, kind of a large group scale question and answer session. And, and finally, um, in the second session, we'll uh, move into breakout rooms where all of the LC faculty um, will, will be available for uh, consultation and discussion. And this, at that point, all of the interested students uh, will be able to, to move freely about from one uh, breakout room to another. And we really encourage you to do that too, and to you know say hi to people, introduce yourself. Um, uh, it's just online, but you can think of it. You know, if we were in person, you might move around from one group to another and um, say hi and talk about what you're interested in and hear about um, what what the faculty are interested in. So that's the plan uh, that we have ahead of us. And the next uh, thing here is the the greeting. The next item on our list is the greeting from the LC director, uh, Professor Yasu Sekini. Oh, thank you, Sean. Uh, I'm Yasu Sekine, of uh, director of LC, Arts Life Science Institute. And I'd like to uh, say thanks all of the, the attendants of, to the webinar of our uh, graduate school course. So I'd like to briefly introduce about our institute, LC. So LC was established about 10 years ago as one of the, the world's premier international research center initiatives. So this is a, a kind of the, the Japanese government's the project on the research and the interaction with the international research institute. And this WPI uh, research center initiatives aims to construct a research center with the world's leading scientists and the top level research environment. And uh, the WPI research center initiative should be a visible research center in Japan from the world. So the among the about 13s or 14s WPI research centers, the LC is the unique institute which aims to uh, understand or investigate the origins of Earth and life on Earth. So in the last 10 years, the, we promote the interdis interdisciplinary researches on the origins of Earth and life. And then we try to do the top level science and we try to do the fusion uh, of the existing discipline to construct a new type of this sprint uh, to reveal the origin of Earth and life. And also we promote, uh, strongly promote the, the globalization of the institutes. And also we try to do the reform of Japanese university systems. So in the last 10 years, we tried to more fo uh, focus on the origin of Earth and life. And in the next, decades, uh, we will uh, try to do or try to investigate the possibility of extraterrestrial life beyond the Earth uh, in collaboration with some space missions. 
So, and the LC, after the, the 10 years of the establishment, the LC already launched the education program, which is called the LC course or Arts Life Science course within our institutes, our institutes, I mean, the Tokyo Tech. So the, this is the, the very unique education program of astrobiology. And uh, you will be able to hear about the details of our uh, education programs later by Professor Nakamura and uh, Professor Matsura. So anyway, uh, I'd like to uh, welcome all of you and uh, also appreciate for joining this webinar. Thank you. Great, so now let's move on to the overview of the LC course. Uh, okay, hello everyone. I'm Ryuhei Nakamura, one of the faculty member of LC course. So uh, here I'd like to uh, take a couple of slides to introduce or uh, talk about a brief overview of LC grad course. And first about philosophy of LC course. Uh, philosophy of LC course is to challenge the fundamental question of arts and life science. And uh, we would like to foster the student who wish to tackle the fundamental question in natural science such as origin and evolution living planet. And at the same time, we'd like to foster the student who are able to solve the global issues such as environment, climate, water, and resources that are of course essential to our long-term survival. So with this motivation in mind, uh, LC calls set five unique features. So let me explain the five unique features one by one. And the first unique feature of our LC courses is this is a combined uh, integrated master's and doctor program with financial support as salary. Because this is a five-year uh, project, the students are able to tackle the uh, difficult but fundamental question with a long-term perspective. And also we'd like to offer you a financial support up to five years about 170,000 Japanese yen per month. And regarding the enrollment fee and tuition fee, our students are required to pay enrollment fee and tuition fee for the first semester shown here. Uh, however, a tuition fee for the second semester and subsequent semester can be waived upon application and approval. And a second unique feature of LC courses, like uh, Professor Sekine explained, uh, that is interdisciplinary research across arts, planetary science, biology, and chemistry. So as you will see from individual introduction, uh, uh, research activity introduction from API and API, a student in LC are highly, highly encouraged to collaborate with multiple PIs and API, having a different research background, uh, including biology and chemistry, planetary science. And third feature, unique feature of LC course is, uh, we'd like to offer you the world reading uh, research environment. So students joining our LC course we will study in highly interdisciplinary and international environment, which was established, uh, uh, second, uh, Professor Sekine mentioned, under the World Premium Research Center Program, WPI. So we really would like to share such a world-class cutting-edge research environment to all of you. And that institute, our institute located at the central area of Tokyo, Okama campus. And a fourth unique feature of LC course is the education in a highly international environment. 
And approximately half of the uh, member are uh, non-Japanese and official language is English. And all lecture, classes, and uh, thesis presentation and uh, scientific discussion will, will be done in English. And as you will see today, uh, many of faculty members are English native. That's why uh, you are able to experience a highly international research environment while staying talking Japan. And the last one is the, uh, not only uh, working on the fundamental question, but also uh, we like to encourage students to collaborate with companies. I mean, a student are able to join internship in company uh, which are involved in the environmental energy and a space business to learn how to set and solve the social problems. So we believe this kind of curriculum enable to create diversity in the student career path after obtaining a, a doctoral degree. Okay, so that all about the brief uh, overview of LC course. Thank you very much. Great, thanks for your hit. So next uh, we have the research activity introductions by the LC faculty. And uh, to, be, to begin with, um, I can explain the, the current faculty structure uh, of the Institute. We have uh, eight principal investigators shown here on the left. And we have um, newly joined um, associate PIs on the right. And uh, today, uh, us faculty member comprised of the PIs and the, and the APIs will be sharing um, our research uh, interests and activities with you. And then uh, with the uh, idea that we'll have these breakout sessions and you'll be able to um, consult with us. And I should also uh, mention that the current structure here is that the um, students um, are only um, able to, to join under the supervision of a principal investigator and um, co-supervision is offered um, in conjunction with the associate PIs. And so for, for students that are interested in uh, collaborating um, with the API, it'll uh, the nature of that collaboration would be um, joint with uh, with one of the PIs. So um, either the PI or the API can explain that to um, you in more detail later on. So the first uh, we have is the uh, uh, Hidenori Kendalab. Okay, thank you, Sean. Okay, let's start with my group. Uh, my name is Hidenori Genda. I'm one of the uh, PIs here at LC. So um, my research interest is to understand how wide variety of solar system bodies like a planet, uh, satellites, and asteroids formed. For example, I want to know why our Earth has oceans, but uh, Venus uh, doesn't ocean. Also, I would like to know why sizes of planets are so different. Why does ours have a big moon, but uh, Mars has uh, two small moons? Uh, we are investigating those very fundamental questions that uh, kids come up with. Through these researches, uh, ultimately, I want to know uh, how and why our Earth got the environment where life was born and evolved. Uh, in my lab, uh, we are solving the processes in which planetary bodies form and evolve, mainly by using uh, computer simulations. Uh, these pictures are computers that uh, my group is using. By using these computers, uh, this animation is an uh, example of my simulation result. Uh, which is showing a giant impact, uh, which commonly happened during Earth's formation. In addition to uh, these computer simulations, I am also involved in planetary exploration missions, 
such as uh, JAXA, Red Hayabusa 2, and MMX, and so on. Also, I'm collaborating with uh, many researchers uh, who are doing experiments, uh, analysis, observation, and field works. Uh, here, uh, the slide is showing the, uh, my group. Uh, I have uh, seven uh, members uh, working with me, one postdoc and five, uh, uh, five graduate students and one uh, undergraduate student. Uh, next month, a uh, new uh, graduate student in LC course uh, will join us, our group, uh, coming from the US. Uh, as you can see, the research topics are very wide from a planet formation. He is using uh, machine learning, uh, early Earth, early Venus, uh, collisions, uh, habitability, uh, something like that. So if you are interested in those uh, research, uh, please join, uh, join our group and uh, let's work together. So that's all, thank you. Great, thanks, Yudinari. John, would you like to go ahead? Thanks, Yudinari. John, would you like to go ahead and share? Yes, yeah, so let me share my screen. Um... So my uh, research group is interested in how uh, planets evolve and how they're shaped by dynamical processes that happen uh, through the entire planet. And this includes processes from the center, including uh, the cores of planets, how magnetic fields are generated, to mantle convection in the rocky parts of the planets, plate tectonics, volcanism, as well as the evolution of the surface environment. So what we're trying to do is look at planets and uh, have a deeper view of the interior uh, to understand how these planets are working, uh, how they're exchanging matter throughout the, the entire uh, system. And it's a very much a, a system science approach that involves the, the entire planet from the, the center to the uh, surface environment. Um, to do this, we use models, and uh, in my group, we use both forward and inverse models. So forward models are uh, simulations, so we will simulate mantle convection and uh, plate tectonics and, and uh, things like that using computers, uh, similar to what uh, Genda-san's group does. And uh, But we'll also do inverse models where we'll collect data such as seismological data, gravity, or geomagnetic data. And we'll uh, also use models to invert for the properties of the interior of the planet. And our goal is to understand how the planets behave as a complex system uh, from their formation to uh, through history, and how this couples then with the biosphere, the emergence of a biosphere which is a part of the geological system in, in our view. So that's uh, all for my slides. Great, thanks, John. Uh, next we have uh, Yasu. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, I'm Yasu Sekune, PI of LC. Um, is there life beyond the Earth in the solar system? This is the fundamental questions that we have been tackling uh, in the last several years. So, according to the recent advances in the spacecraft explorations, that we now know that there are multiple habitable planet or habitable satellite in our solar system in terms of the presence of liquid water, organic materials, and also chemical energy. So the, according to the recent Mars explorations, we have known that there are a body network that create minerals and the sediment on the surface of, our, of, of Mars. 
And currently, the most robbers have been robbering on the surface of ancient lake sediment and collect the sample rock to analyze its chemical and mineralogical composition to reveal the habitability of this planet. And in the outer solar system, uh, there are multiple geologically active uh, icy ocean worlds uh, where the subsurface ocean exists beneath the icy uh, class, icy surface. So spacecraft now did the in situ analysis for the crew materials erupting from the subsurface ocean and analyzed its chemical composition to reveal whether the subsurface ocean environment is really habitable for life. So in my laboratory, the, the main research methodology is laboratory experiments in which we try to reproduce the physical and the chemical conditions like uh, temperature, pressures, and radiations uh, on the planet and satellites and to see, the, to understand the chemical reactions and the geophysical processes possibly occurs on these uh, planetary bodies. And we try to compare the, the results with the space exploration. And in the collaboration with field geologists and uh, also the synthetic biologists, we try to do the new uh, researches like uh, uh, to predict the potential biomarker in the planetary body. And also we try to do the field work uh, to the terrestrial analog field of Mars and I see planetary bodies. So I have been involved in the several uh, space missions, international space missions, which include the International Mars Ice Mopper, induced Jupiter Icy Moon Explorers by NASA, by ESA, and also Dragonfly mission to Titan, led by NASA. So if you, you're interested in these uh, international space explorations, then I also welcome you. So the now, Currently, we have almost 10 students plus one postdocs, and uh, we welcome uh, you to join our group. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Yasu. Uh, next, we have uh, Ryuhei. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Ryuhei Nakamura, a PI of LC course. So here in our laboratory, we set the question, how did geochemistry become biology? In other words, we are really interested in the integrating geology and biology in a context of uh, chemical origin of life. And to fill the gap between geology and biology, we are using our strong scientific uh, knowledge and background, which is uh, material science and catalytic chemistry with a member listed here, and also a number of collaborators inside and outside LC. And to fill the gap between geology and biology, currently we are working mainly on the two subjects. Uh, Gendo-san, could you go to the next slide? Yeah, first subject we are working is the energy to drive catalysis in a similar manner to biology. So as you may know, uh, electrochemical gradient across a cellular membrane is likely uh, universal for all domain of life. And a very similar energy conversion processes are taking place at deep sea hydrothermal environment shown here, uh, where a delta pH, delta T, or ion gradient are converted into the electrical energy. So in this project, uh, by applying the advanced knowledge of material science, we are trying to understand as much as possible the similarity between the energy conversion process in a modern biological cellular system and energy conversion processes at the hydrothermal vent system. 
uh, okay, uh, uh, Gendasan go to next. And uh, uh, next uh, main subject we are working in the proto metabolism driven by the mineral catalyst. In this project, we are exploring uh, mineral as a, a catalyst which have a similar function with a metal enzyme in modern biology. For instance, by exploring uh, metal sulfide as a pre enzymatic catalyst, we demonstrate a CO2 reduction and a fixation shown here. And recently, we are working very hard on the nitrogen cycle shown in the right part of this slide, where we uh, demonstrate some part of a nitrogen cycle using a metal oxide and metal sulfide mineral coupled with a, uh, this equilibrium provided by the geological con uh, uh, setting. So the one of the ultimate goal of this kind of project is to integrate carbon metabolism and nitrogen metabolism to make a carbon nitrogen compound, which become a building block for a peptide, DNA, and RNA. So if you are interested in this kind of approach to address the question of chemical origin of life, uh, please come to my uh, breakout room and have a discussion. So thank you very much. Hey, thanks for your help. Okay, and uh, next I'd like to take just a few minutes to discuss about the research activity happening in my lab. Uh, we study everything from small molecules to cells and cells that are embedded in whole ecosystems. That's kind of laid out ahead of us on the slide where our larger study systems are on the top, where we're looking at microbial diversity, taxonomic evolution, and geochemistry in hot springs, as shown here on the left, this is an iron-rich carbonate hot spring off the coast of Tokyo here on the island of Shikinajima. We study the evolution of bacteria and archaea in these environments to try to learn about taxonomic evolution as it may have occurred uh, throughout Earth history. Going down in scale on the top right here, we also study individual cells in populations to try to generate uh, a picture of population activity that's built from the level of individual cell activities. Look at these cells in this consortia here. Some of them are bright red and some of them are kind of dull blue and some of them are green. This is a signal of isotope uptake. And what it tells us is that cells in populations that are genetically identical behave very, very differently from one another. We're searching for the explanation for this using theory, uh, metabolic modeling, and also these uh, nanosims based uh, isotope tracer measurements. Going down in scale, um, out, outside of a cell to the bottom right here, we also study enzyme evolution. Mostly in my group currently, we're focused on metalloenzymes and uh, the activity of metalloenzymes and catalysis. And we're also attempting to link enzyme mediated. Uh, kinetic, isotope, kinetic isotope effects to the sedimentary record of life on Earth, which is largely present in the form of sedimentary isotope effects. We're trying to link molecular biology to the sedimentary record. Going down in scale, um, we study short peptides, look at how they can or cannot bind metals, metal clusters, how they um, can achieve catalysis. Down in scale, we study molecules and Currently, the main focus in chemistry in, in the group is to look at how electron transfer reactions can be coupled to um, group transfer potential with an eye towards um, achieving uh, an understanding of prebiotic polymerization. How do we do this? Well, we go into the field. Here is a, a photo of um, us um, um, in a fjord in Iceland where we dove to a hydrothermal vent and take samples. We do metagenomics. Um, we, we employ all the chemical chemistry techniques we can, chromatography, NMR, et cetera. We do enzymology, but we combine enzymology with uh, isotope ratio mass spectrometry. 
We study the physiology of cells, especially with their bioenergetic complexes in mind. We study protein evolution using phylogeny. And again, on the bottom left, we use single cell activity measurements to try to build population um, understanding or population level understanding from the single cell level up. I want to point um, interested students to a few key publications that um, highlight some of the research interests and continued interests here, and also these keywords that I've listed over here in orange. And I'd like to encourage students to contact me if you're interested in these, these areas. If you do contact me, I would like to ask you to tell me what is the most interesting research paper you have read recently? Why is it important? And what uh, research might be next coming out of that? And if you've had a chance to look at my own publications, I'd like to hear your comments about them. Uh, is, there a, is there a mistake in the publications? Is there a new problem that you see, um, a new challenge that was created from these publications? And furthermore, I'd like to know which tools and techniques you're interested in learning. What type of a challenge are you really aiming um, uh, in, not only intellectually and conceptually in your graduate school, but also from a technological or a logistical standpoint, I also want to know um, which techniques you're interested in learning about. Thank you. And we can talk more in the breakout session. So I will stop my screen share. And let's move to Kosuke. OK, thank you, Sean. <clears throat> so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kosuke Fujishima. I'm one of the PIs of LC. And my background is mainly molecular biology, but I'm also very interested in the origin of life. And I actually did my uh, postdoc at NASA Ames Research Center. And this image that you're looking at is actually a very famous painting on the third floor of the NASA Ames Research Center, uh, where they basically uh, try to um, uh, present the origin and evolution of life in the universe. Um, so as you can see, we have all these stars forming. And then on the left side, you have basically the beginning of life where they show all these thunderbolts, you know, chemical uh, reactions with the volcanic activity. And in the ocean, you see these small molecules. So we basically start from here. <laughs> and now we're ended up on the right side over here. So my uh, research interest actually lies in this small niche area where they actually drew some sort of a polymer, uh, which eventually immediately became these like single cell molecules. Um, so my interest is this macromolecular evolution. And the idea is to basically redraw out this figure, <laughs> update this figure in the next uh, couple of, next decade or so. So, um, I would like to um, introduce some of my uh, ongoing research in the lab. So basically, our, my approach or my group's approach is synthetic biology, creating molecules, observing their, um, how they uh, change, how they evolve, and uh, what will be the function of these evolved molecules. And we're especially interested in the early biopolymers. So for example, what were the um, early function or what were the physical chemical properties of these early, um, say, short polypeptides or um, of RNA molecules? How did they emerge? How did they interact? How did they co-evolve? Um, these are the questions that um, I'm very interested in and some of my group members are also interested in. So just to simply show you what we're doing, uh, one of the techniques that our lab is using is so-called an in vitro evolution. So we're able to create um, millions or trillions of different, um, for example, polypeptide molecules in a test tube, and we can screen for their function. So one of the things that we're focusing on is looking at their primordial RNA uh, binding properties. 
Um, now, if you think about these RNA and protein, um, they actually lie in the core of biology. So maybe some of you have heard of ribosome. This is a complex, a very complicated molecular machine that consists of RNA and protein. But what it basically is doing is it, the R, small RNA molecule bringing the amino acid, stitching them together to make a polypeptide. And this catalysis is actually uh, governed by RNA itself. So RNA is making protein. Where did that come from? <laughs> that's, that's kind of like a question that I want to address here. So one of the things we're doing is basically trying to extract the most conserved core structure of this ribosome, see if it can still operate. Could this small core structure, which may have existed for a billion years ago on early earth environment, can this molecule still operate? How do they operate? What type of environment do they operate? What salt do they need? What pH, what metals? So these are the questions that we want to address from a molecular perspective, but connecting into the geochemical uh, environment, geochemical world. So speaking of the geochemistry, um, I'm not an expert, but my lab is also very interested in chemical evolution. So we're interested in how the key building blocks of life are created on early earth environment or elsewhere. So one of the things we're doing is to use a uh, reactor. So on the right side, you can actually see, does everyone seeing my um, animation? I'm just, I, I just wanna make sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah, some people are nodding, great. So on the right side, what you can see is we have this um, hydrothermal reactor. So it's basically, it's a pressure cooker whether you can maintain a high pressure temperature of a simulated, uh, uh, like an early earth seawater uh, or other um, solvents such as uh, like liquid CO2, for example. And on the right side, you see these robotic system where you can actually do a uh, uh, iteration of different condition of wet dry cycling. And it's semi-automated, so you can actually test out different conditions. So, one of the reactions that we're interested in is the phosphorylation because phosphate is one of the key elements of life. It's actually involved in many different molecules such as ATP or cofactors, of course, RNA molecule, DNA molecule. So without phosphate, it's really hard to think of uh, how to operate the biological system, but often these phosphor, uh, phosphates are basically embedded in the mineral. So how do you extract these phosphates how do you connect these phosphate onto organic molecules is a key question. And this is something that one of my uh, students is tackling. on. So if you're interested in these uh, molecular evolution type experiments um, or these uh, chemical evolution type experiments that eventually lead to these macromolecular system of life, please feel free to contact me or uh, speak to me during the breakout session. And so my group is, we have like 15 members including 10 students uh, and a couple of techn uh, technical staffs and uh, intern students. We also do international collaboration um, from uh, researchers from uh, with a different backgrounds from different continental areas. So uh, we're very uh, open to uh, open-minded and uh, we really uh, enjoy doing science together uh, through discussion. So um, if you like this type of kind of a open, uh, diverse atmosphere, uh, please uh, talk to me. So with that, I would like to end my talk. Uh, Great, thanks, Thank Kostya. you. Thanks. Uh, next, uh, we have Tomo. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Tomo Matsuda. Um, I hope you hear me. Uh, we're working uh, in the field called bottom-up synthetic biology, and the final goal is to understand the emergence and evolution of living system. And so um, we're using... Um, uh, we're doing experiments in the lab to understand the emergence and evolution of the living system. So can you go to the next slide, please? 
Okay, as most of you know, the modern cells are very complex and really sophisticated. But it's very hard to believe that uh, this kind of um, things has uh, appeared all of a sudden, and it's more reasonable to think that it started from much simpler chemicals like ammonia, CO2, or whatever, whatever, and has evolved to more complex molecules like building blocks, namely uh, amino acids or nucleotides, something or um, and amino acids, enzymes, and then went to more complex to something like protocell and then evolved to a modern cell. And I think this is, I think most of the people uh, in the, in um, at least if they are working in, in the field of science, believe this kind of scenario that it has become, uh, the life has started from simple and then became more complex. So how can we prove that, um, um, that this scenario is true or what kind of scenario is possible? And so many people are working on this topic because it's so interesting. And the, 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 the main concept is, the, is written on the bottom of the slide that if we can mimic this process in the laboratory, it shows one possible route for the origins of biomolecules, cells, or life. And in particular, um, we in our group, we're working on this um, white boxed place where we used um, biomolecules to create protocells. And we're asking whether we can make a cell-like structure from scratch in the lab. So can you go to the next slide? Thank you. So this is the last slide. More precisely speaking, we work with uh, small chemicals, nucleic acids, proteins, and lipids that are from uh, the, the living cells. And also, we also work with use um, synthetic molecules too to, um, to construct a so-called artificial cell or synthetic cell or protocell, whatever you want to call. Um, these are um, made from these building blocks. And on the right, these are the, um, the artificial cells which we have created. Um, unfortunately, um, the movies don't move. Uh, I'm sorry about that. It's all stopped at zero second and, and will never move, but it's supposed to be show a very uh, funny dynamics, but oh, that's okay. And by using um, this approach and creating this kind of artificial cell, we try to answer the question uh, questions such as how does compartment size affects the the reactions inside, or how can we give the evolvability to the artificial cells, and so on and so forth. So, if you are interested in this kind of approach, uh, please feel free to contact me, and uh, we can talk uh, at the um, uh, afterwards. Yeah, thank you. That's all from me. Great. Thanks, Tomo. So next we move into research presentations by the LC APIs. And first we have um, Hiro. Uh, thanks, Sean. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Hiro Kikurokawa. And I am an associated PEI of LC. And the members of my group and myself are studying how planets form, evolve, and sustain the habitable environments for life based on the theory as well as numerical uh, modeling. And our research uh, topics include the protoplanetary disk uh, process shown here and uh, planet accretion and uh, differentiation shown in the uh, middle and also the climate evolution shown in the uh, right hand side. And also we put some uh, emphasis on the uh, interdisciplinarity so that we do not just uh, simulate those things in computers, but also we uh, combine them with uh, planetary explorations and uh, observations. Uh, so next slide, please. So far, then, my lab is not uh, big, but I am currently working with uh, two students and one a vegetable researcher. Uh, she was a former uh, student on the variety of topics, uh, including uh, planet formation, the accretion of Earth like uh, planets and the evolution of more uh, uh, exotic planets beyond our uh, solar system. And you, if you are interested to uh, join us, uh, please uh, contact uh, me and for more details, we can talk uh, during the breakout session. Thank you. 
Thank you. Great. Thanks, Hiro. Yeah, please go ahead, Hiro. Yeah, thank you, Sean. So I'm, hello, everyone. So I'm can you, Teresa. Can you speak up a little bit more? Or at least it's a little oh. bit dim for me. Is it dim? Is the voice? How is it for everybody else? Sorry, so can you hear me? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, better. Oh, OK, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm now Hiro Terasaka on API in LC. So I recently joined uh, in LC, so this June. And uh, so that's why now I'm setting up my laboratory. And the current member is me and the Dr. Tajima, who is postdoctoral post researcher. So the left bottom part shows the concept image of the origin of life research in, from LC homepage. And our research area is a little circle area, so it's a really downstream of this flow. So our research interest, interest is how functional molecules emerged and evolved to life in the ancient Earth. So to answer this question, so we are doing a laboratory evolution of biomolecules by synthetic biology and directed evolution approaches. So in addition, we are also uh, working on the biotechnology development uh, for origin of life research. Uh, could you go next slide? Thank you. So our research topic uh, can be uh, categorized to three topics. So synthetic virology and primitive translation system and evolution of the LL LLPS uh, proteins. So all these topics were not independent and but involved in each other. So the first topic is the LLPS. So it has recently reported that the uh, uh, liquid liquid phase separation, uh, so-called LLPS, is critical for the or origin of life research. And we are trying to evolve such LLPS inducing peptide and RNA molecules to make an artificial membraneless organelle to reconstitute the ancient life. And second, the primitive translation. So as you may know, so RNA is considered as first functional biomolecule in ancient Earth. And we are working on the catalytic RNA ribozyme, especially on the amino acylation reaction to develop the primitive translation system. And also working on the genetic code reprogramming techniques to utilize a non-canonical amino acid uh, into the protein or peptide chain. And the third topic is a synthetic virology. So we recently evolved the bacterial protein and self-assembling protein to virus-like protein capsule packaging RNA. So we are trying to develop more functional virus-like structures to shed light on the origin of virus research and also uh, to develop the virus alternative technology. So we, uh, we all, uh, really welcome students having various backgrounds. So and see you later in the breakout room. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Nahiro. And next we have Liam. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Liam Longo, and I'm an API at LC. Um, my lab opened up just very recently, um, so we're just getting started. Uh, my research uh, is guided by the question, how do complex biological states emerge from so simple a beginning? Uh, this is a reference to a famous quote by Darwin. Um, so from so simple a beginning, endless forms are evolved and being evolved. My interests are pretty broad. Um, I'm interested in questions like, how do we get from short, simple peptides into complex proteins? So how do we, how do we understand that apparent discontinuity and jump over it? Um, how do we think about prebiotic chemistry? And can we understand the transition from prebiotic chemistry to biochemistry? And part of that is understanding perhaps the transition from a G enzyme to an enzyme. Um, my interest is not necessarily on iron sulfur clusters. Um, I'm actually interested in trying to understand different systems that might have interacted with uh, the mineral surface. And recently, um, I've been really getting interested in questions about how do we understand the transition from no mind to mind? And in some sense, yeah. this is related to the question of the origin of life. Um, and this is a question that really has grown out of my building interest in artificial life. And so if that's something that people are interested in, please contact me. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Um, if you join my group, uh, I wanna tell you that you can learn a really big picture view 
uh, of chemistry and, and biology. So I have training in bioinformatics. This is computational. I have training in biophysics and biochemistry and structural uh, biology. We'll use all of those skills together to address these big questions about the nature of life and the origins of life. So I don't have pointer control, I don't think, but uh, the papers on the bottom uh, reference, you know, the first one is, is purely bioinformatic paper. And as you go on, we have purely experimental papers. So I'm interested in students that want to do one path or another path, or maybe both paths. Um, if it's your interest, but you don't have prior experience, I want to tell you that's okay. Uh, I actually switched fields myself and I will, I think that you can too. And if you're interested in, yes, of course, and the lab has two mascots, this is crucially important. <laughs> I don't know who's doing the pointing, but thank you. Um, so if you're interested in these questions and thinking about continuity and discontinuity and how evolution has been able to make these big jumps, uh, come and speak with me in the breakout rooms. Thanks so much. Great, thanks, Liam. Next we have Tony. Hi everyone, so my name is Tony Ja. Uh, I'm an API at LC. I became one in uh, April, like uh, some of the other APIs here. And before that, I was a lab manager of the chemistry unit. And I actually came to LC in 2017. Uh, before that, I studied completely in the US. And so here at LC, we're interested in a lot of different questions related to primitive chemistries and how these primitive chemistries could have assembled into something you know, relevant or functional that could have supported the origin of life. And so some of the questions that we're interested in uh, are shown up here. And one of the most interesting questions that we are working on is, you know, there are many different ways that biomolecules could have uh, emerged on early earth, for example, through extraterrestrial means, through mineral surface interactions, through hydrothermal vents. At the same time, a large number of non-biomolecules, if you will, also, um, could have emerged. And so what might be interesting is that perhaps these non-biomolecules could have, you know, assembled into something relevant for the origin of life by themselves or in um, com combination with various biomolecules. So to that end, there are a number of different topics that we study, including but not limited to, for example, um, you know, polyester synthesis through dehydration, rehydration, kind of pure prebiotic chemistry, um, membraneless protocell assembly, kind of studying chirality and effects on primitive polymerization and other, you know, membraneless self-assembled structures like, you know, DNA liquid crystal coacervates. Uh, next slide, please. And so just uh, as a little flavor of the different things we work on, here are some of our recent publications, which include, you know, some prebiotic chemistry, some um, more biophysics related work, and so uh, if you're interested, please take a look at those. And we also work with a lot of different um, researchers, both within Japan, within Asia, uh, and other countries, Europe and North America, too. So if you're interested in studying, you know, prebiotic chemistry, if you're interested in studying how primitive chemistries could assemble into um, primitive uh, compartments or other self-assembled structures, uh, please come and... Uh, we, we can chat a little bit later. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tony. Uh, next, uh, we have Nathaniel. Hello, so yeah, I'm Nathaniel Virgo. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in the, the fundamental questions about the origin of life, or it's a certain set of fundamental questions about the origin of life. And in particular, I'm really interested in what we can say about them using techniques from physics, uh, computer science and mathematics. Um, so my background is in is in is in artificial life, um, which means the which means the study of computer simulations to try and answer these these questions. Uh, but I also do maths as well. Uh, so um, one one such question is how how do so I guess like the big picture is you start somehow with chemistry and in the end you have all the uh, all the all the biology, all the biodiversity that we see around us. So how do you get from one to the other? And kind of one end of that question is what happens when you when you start with chemistry? How do chemical networks self-organize into more complex forms? So the question here is is really what what features does a chemical network need to have in order for that to happen? Um, and that can be we can try to answer that by simulating chemical networks or by doing math mathematics 
effects on simple models of chemical networks to try and see, for example, how does heredity emerge? How does a chemical system start to become something that can carry information um, rather than simply just react and, and go to an equilibrium state? Uh, another part of that question is, is how do the mechanisms of evolution themselves involve, uh, evolve? So a lot of the other researchers mentioned the ribosome, which is a very complex piece of machinery that's responsible for, for turning um, nucleic acids into proteins inside the cell. And kind of how did that evolve, right? There's a kind of weird question where you somehow you have to start from something much, much simpler than that, because that's that those that machinery is far too complex to have existed before there was life. You have to start with something much, much simpler, but um, but how can evolution happen in a much simpler system? And what evolutionary forces would cause evolution to invent something so complicated? Um, so these are these are pretty um, big questions. And if we knew the answer to them, we would have an idea of, we would have maybe a slightly better idea of how, how likely life might be to emerge on other planets and how common it might be in the universe. Uh, another question I'm currently very interested in with a lot of my projects is, what does it mean to be an agent? All living things, even at the cellular level, have kind of goals or seem to have goals that they need to accomplish in order to survive and reproduce. Um, but kind of where does that come from? Where does the what is the idea of a goal and, and why are there things in the world that seem like they have them? Uh, I'm also interested in applications of, of, of evolution and this kind of theory of agents to machine learning and artificial intelligence. And that's also part of my research at the moment. Uh, so if you're interested in in using these sorts of techniques, computer simulations uh, and mathematics and physics to answer these sort of fairly fundamental questions about the origin of life, uh, then I'm really happy to, to, to have a chat. Uh, and then the next slide, you can sort of skip to it and then we'll just do it really quickly. This just says that a lot of my research takes the form of uh, external collaborations as well as internal collaborations within LC. Um, and that's all I really want to say. Great, thanks Nathaniel. Thanks all LC faculty. So that um, I think wraps us up from the research descriptions of the faculty members. And next we move on to the uh, description of the application procedures in the entrance examination. Okay, uh, this is Hidenori speaking again. Uh, we are behind the schedule. But the next topic, application and entrance examination is very, very important for you. So please allow me to explain applications and entrance exam. Okay. Um, um, actually for details, <laughs> please visit uh, these links below and check the details by yourself. This is very important. One is the LC course homepage, and the other is the official uh, 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 website of the international uh, graduate program that we call IGPC. Uh, you can find the PDF document of the application guide for IGPC. So I will put uh, those uh, links uh, in the chat box. So please visit those websites uh, later. Okay, let me start with schedule. Uh, schedule. But before that, uh, this is the most important information for you. The enrollment capacity is limited to five students at the maximum in this uh, selection process. So uh, we will accept a uh, maximum five students. We are here in the orientation webinar today. Uh, okay, about the schedule, the most important date is the October 16th, which is the deadline for application. But before that, you should, uh, you need to submit a consent letter. The deadline is October 11th. Uh, to get the consent letter, you should contact LCPIs and also APIs if necessary, and discuss your research interests 
and your research plans with PIs and APIs. When you decide who you want to work with, you will show your interest to only one PI. And then you may get a consent letter from one PI. So you need to express your interest to one LCPI by uh, September 28th. Okay, after you submit everything, you will have an interview uh, early November. This interview is the entrance exam. After that, you will get to know the result on December 7th. When you look at the official application guide showing here, you will find the same schedule showing here, but with much more detailed information. It says uh, contact uh, PIs and get the consent letter. Submission will be done uh, through online. Here you can find the word written examination, uh, but uh, for LC course, there is no written examination, only interview. Okay, about consent letter. You will start contacting multiple PIs and APIs listed here. You will discuss with them and decide who you want to work with. Then you will show you your interest to only one PI, and then you will obtain, you will get one consent letter from one PI. Only PI can send you a consent letter. Also, because of the enrollment capacity, uh, maximum five students, you may not be able to obtain a consent letter. Okay, let me explain admission screening process. LC course is an interdisciplinary course under three uh, departments. The Department of Earth and Planetary Science, Sciences, which we call EPS. Uh, Department of the Life Science and Technology, uh, LST. And Department of Chemical Science and Engineering, we call CSE. So you will apply for LC course via through either EPS or LST or CSE, depending on PI's affiliation. Uh, we are LC PI's, but at the same time, we are belonging to one department. For example, I am belonging to EPS. Uh, admission screening process is a bit uh, different among uh, departments. Applicants through EPS will have a uh, uh, interview selection. That's it. But the uh, applicants via LSD or CSE will be evaluated based on their scores and grades, etc. And after that, those with appropriate marks will proceed to uh, interview selection. So for the case of LST and CSE, there are uh, two, uh, 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 they have a uh, uh, first screening, then interview selection. So there is a bit uh, different among the department. So interview will be uh, held online. First, you will make five to 10 minutes a presentation by sharing your slides. After that, um, after that, you will have a 30 minutes to 35 minutes Q and A session. All these uh, conversation will be done in English. Your presentation should include how your background led you to apply for the LC course and what kind of research you want to do at LC. We will ask many questions. Some are related to your presentation. Some are not directly related to your presentation. 
We also often ask basic knowledge in your major, which you studied at your university, because we want to be sure that you, are, you studied very well. Okay, that's all about application and entrance examination. Uh, I'll give it back to Sean. Great, thanks, Hidenori. So we're on to the number five, uh, question and answer period. And there's a lot of us um, here today. And uh, so what I'd like to ask people to do is if you have a question to type it into the chat box and then um, uh, I or another uh, LC member will will answer that. Primarily, I'll I'll field the questions um, and then we'll ask for support from LC members. So, um, how, how about um, questions in the chat box? Just go ahead and type them in. Um, after the this session here, when we move into session two, you'll be able to ask uh, detailed questions about research to the. Uh, healthy faculty. So this is a time um, less about asking research questions, but more about asking questions about the course, the structure of the course, the entry to the course, um, etc. It's more about the mechanics of the course. 